Hey everybody! Today your auto preview is a prototype of Cascadia, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Cascadia, folks, where we are going to be drafting tiles to try to create the most harmonious collection of five different species of animals, the red fox, the Chinook salmon, the Roosevelt elk, the grizzly bear, and the red-tailed hawk. And when I say harmonious, I mean uh, lay them out in such a way that it adheres to these different scoring tiles, like in this game. I could be going for this bear scoring, which gives me 10 points for every cluster of three bears that has no other bears adjacent to it. But it could instead be this one, which is, uh, uh, you know, again, trying to get unique clusters of bears, but a single one is worth two, uh, a double is worth five, and a triple is worth end, uh, is worth nine, plus three points if I've got one of each of the sizes. Or a, uh, just try to get pairs of bears. Every pair of bear is going to get progressively more and more points, the more of them I've got. So every time you play, all four or five of these animals is going to have a random way to score. So in this game, I'm trying to make a network of hawks that can see each other with line of sight. Every pair of them is worth three points. The elk, I'm trying to get them into straight lines. The longer the line, the more points. The salmon, I'm just trying to get a bigger run of salmon. And the foxes, well, in this case, they want to be next to pairs of animals. Uh, you know, if they can, if it can be surrounded by three separate pairs of animals, seven points. Only one pair, three points. So, that is the definition of a harmony in this game. And so, we are ready to go. And how does it work? Well, each player has a starting example of three tiles. I've got this one where I've got a big bunch of water where salmon can go. Salmon can also go over here in this forest field area. There's presumably little streams or tributaries. And uh, over here in this mountainous wetlands area, we could have foxes or the hawks. And I am going to pick one of these four clusters. I can take this forest, which comes with a bear. I can take this water slash forest that comes with a hawk, or and so on. And I can't mix and match. I can't take the hawk and this, because, oh, that would be great, uh, because the hawk could go on here. Although, in this case, this is fine, because the hawk could go on there. But I don't have to, because I could I could take this group and put the hawk over here, and put this over here, say, to expand my forest. Although, you know, uh, this isn't great, because I'd like to, at the same time, expand my forest and my waterways. Because we are competing in this game to score points based off the uh, animal cards that have been chosen, but we are also scoring points based off the way we lay out our terrain. It's like we're playing two separate tile building games at the same time, one layered on top of the other. Because at the end of the game, say I expand this waterway section and get it bigger and bigger and bigger. If this is my biggest waterway at the end of the game, I will score one point for every tile in my biggest section of water. One point for every tile in my biggest section of forest and wetlands and so on. Also, if I have the biggest overall water and forest and wetland and mountain of all the players, I will score bonus points on top of that. So, Every turn in this game is me trying to compromise between getting the ideal animals based on these, but also the ideal landscape based on basically, uh, you know, territory majorities. So, what do I want? Hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab this pairing right here. So I'm grabbing my first bear, which means I want to be on the lookout. And in part is because this particular objective is an easier one because I have a lot more flexibility. I don't have to get pairs or three of a kind. A single bear by himself with no other bears nearby is worth two points. Although I'm still going to try to get a single bear and then a pair of bears and then a tri triple bears so I can get the uh, bonuses. But I like the bears because they give me flexibility. But I like this tile even more because it, uh, well, it gives me a space for foxes. That's fine. But more importantly, it expands the forest in, uh, in all six directions. So I can try to go for biggest forest. And you'll notice there's this little symbol right there. What that means is when I get a fox specifically on this tile, this is called a keystone tile, I will collect one of these nature tokens, which are a big deal. These let us break the rules of the game in a few different ways. 
Plus, uh, if I get these and don't use them, they're worth an extra point at the end of the game. So I think this one makes the most sense. Now, I've got to apply it, and you know, just following normal tiling rules, I could put this wherever I want, but I certainly am incentivized to try to build up uh, my forest bigger rather than putting it over here. But you know what? I might want to do that somewhere down the road because I might plan on putting a fox because I've got pairs of things. And I remember, foxes want to be next to pairs of stuff. But for now, I'm just going to start extending forest in that direction. And I've got these bears. The bear can't go there. But if I've got any open space, and I do, I'm going to put a bear right there. Okay. And maybe that's going to be the part of a pair of bears or three bears because I've still got other bear spots I can put in these areas. But down here, I could only put a fox. All right. And that was my turn. At the end of my turn, we get a new terrain tile. It's some fields and wetlands. and want foxes and elk. And we get another animal token from the big old bag of animal tiles. So it is a fox. And it is Jen's turn. All right. And now, Jen has an extra choice that I did not have. Because as these tiles are coming out randomly, the wilderness tiles, well, first of all, if there's ever a case where all four tiles are the same animal, which is not the case here, but imagine if this were also a fox. If all four are the same, uh, we have had an instance of overpopulation. And you immediately clear all four of them out, draw four new random ones, and then after you're done, uh, you put the, the overpopulated animals back in the bag so they'll show up later. Now, in this case, we've got three. And if Jen wants to, if she doesn't want to see anything about foxes and would like some other options, whenever three are out, we can again trigger the overpopulation, which means all three of these foxes would go away and we'd put new things out. But it's an option. When there's four of a kind, it's a mandatory. When there's three of a kind, the player has the choice to do it. And so Jen has to decide, does she want foxes? The foxes, well... They are worth three, five, or seven points if you get them at the epicenter of one, two, or three pairs. That's kind of a tough one to go for. And um, I think, yeah, I think Jen is going to exercise this and say, bye bye, Foxy Loxy, and bring out some other options. Uh, some salmon, another hawk. And another salmon. Okay. And then these three foxes go back in the bag. We haven't seen the last of them. All right. And so now, what does Jen want to do? She's either going to start working on trying to collect hawks in pairs in line of sight to get three points per, or she's going to start working on salmon to try to get them to be part of salmon runs that can be worth uh, two, four, eight, or 12 points, depending on how long they are, and provided they're not adjacent to other alternate salmon runs. Okay. Um, I think Jen, yeah, Jen's going to go ahead and snag this one. So she's going to start working on salmon and she likes this because with one tile, she is making her mountain range and her waterways bigger. So that's pretty nice. She is pursuing two different majorities there and she could put, well, this is the only place she can put this salmon. Now it is possible sometime that you'll grab a pair, you'll put the terrain wherever you want, and then it turns out the animal you grabbed, there's literally no available space, no legal spot to put them on. In that case, that's very sad. They go back in the bag and you've kind of wasted half of your turn. So Jen's going to do this. And now Jen, if she wants to start working on a longer run, she really needs to make sure she gets more salmon spots here or here so she can extend this one. Okay. And then uh, we get another keystone tile out. And... A, an elk. Okay. And by the way, I, I don't know if I pointed this out. In our starting tile, one of our spaces is a keystone as well. So as soon as I pick up a salmon and put it here, I am going to get myself w another one of these nature tiles up here. So I've got two different opportunities to pursue that. So I would like to get myself a salmon or a fox. And when you know, Jen just wiped out all the foxes. So... That makes this very attractive. I think I'm going to go on ahead and snag this one and this one. Um, although, this is kind of a bummer. I could expand my wetlands or my fields, but I can't expand both. But I want the salmon! Arr, alrighty. And uh, do I have a better option? I would like a forest wetland. There isn't one. Uh, so this is a better option, arguably, because, hey... I, like Jen just did, I could be expanding two different types of landscape. And I can get a hawk... And ah, here's another problem too. In this game, 
hawks want to be in a straight line of line of sight of each other. So say if I put this like here, so I'm expanding both terrains. This is really great. I'm happy about that. And let's say I eventually get a hawk and I put it here. That's great too. Um, although a single hawk, with you know, hawks need to be in pairs in line of sight. Later on, I might get this hawk, but they have to be in a straight line. And these are not. And so if I had a hawk here, these two hawks would score three points. And then if I had hawks here, th you know, this hawk could score three points off of multiple hawks. And these two hawks, you know, if I I had a triple, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six hawks. That'd be great. But, or I'm sorry, no, not six. Um, you know, because it's three per pairing. That would be awesome. But this layout means I've got to put hawks. I mean, these two hawks won't score off of each other. Ah, compromise. What to do? Or do I say to heck with trying to make this imperfect hawk thing and I get... Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this. This salmon is going to go here on my keystone, which means I've got one of these. And remember, if I don't use it, it's worth a point at the end of the game. That might that extra point might win the game. But anyway, am I going to expand my wetlands or am I going to expand my fields? Now, here's the deal. I want to put another bear space here or here so that I can get a second and a third bear so that I can score nine points for having a group of three. No bears are allowed here. This is for elk or foxes. So I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to put this down here and start expanding my wetlands. Uh, this would not be expanding my wetlands, but if, hey, if I get a wetlands right there, then I've got one, two, three, and I might have the biggest wetlands. Um, but no, I'm just going to come down here like this. And so now, uh, that's kind of bothersome. And also, I'm kind of limited. No, I could still expand wetlands down in this direction. And here's an interesting thing. Uh, I have a fair bit of flexibility. If I put a fox here, then... Um, although, no, foxes don't want to be next to other foxes. So, But maybe this is going to be the beginning of my long line of elk. My elk trail, let's say. So anyway, so I've done that. That was maybe not the best move. But I am excited to get this nature token, which will come in handy in the future, as we might see moving forward. Meanwhile, some new stuff comes out. And it is Jen's turn. Okay, and hey, I want to get that fox so I can fill in and get another keystone tile. Hopefully Jen doesn't take it. Let's see, what does Jen want to do? Jen would like to get some more fish to work on this, but none of them are out here. So that means Jen's going to have to start working on hawks. And, oh, and by the way, uh, this was beautiful for this, but Jen has created a situation where these two um, hawks are not in a straight line. Oh, dear. Okay. So... Hmm. Because again, a straight line is you know following the 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 flat edges, um, right? So, does Jen want to get one of these hawks filled? Jen would like to get a bear and get a nature token, but no bears are out. Hmm, let's see. I think Jen will start expanding her mountains, and she'll just put it up here. So she's got another keystone, and so now she's got three mountains to my one. So she's winning on that majority. And hey, you know what? This elk she got, she'll just put it there and immediately give herself. Her own nature token. Pretty nice. Okay. And then a new one comes out. And we got, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Another fox. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. So I want to snag one of these foxes to get another one of these. But do I want either of the, the oh, this is nice. That's nice. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. Because this is now another space I can have a second bear next to my existing one. I could go like this, and this tile is expanding both my forest and my fields, and I'm getting the fox. What did the fox say? Keystone, please. Nature token. Boom. Look at that. Now I've got two of these, which is worth two points. Um, and now I've started to set myself up to get a nice grouping of, of uh, grizzlies up there. Yeah, that was perfect. I'm happy about that. Very, very happy about that. And okay. Oh, and look at this. Jen, once again has a uh, case of potential overpopulation in front of her. Yeah, and I think she doesn't like that. She'd like to see some more elk or salmon show up. So she's going to pop them off and get some new stuff out. Now, you can only do this once. If three more of the same thing came out, Jen could not trigger this action again. So we just fill them up. Ah, oh, some salmon and some foxy loxies and another fox. Which means, you know, Jen cannot clear these foxes out because it's only once per round. Okay, the salmon go back in the sack. And I think Jen wants that salmon to continue to her salmon run. But here's the problem. This is not a good tile for her. This doesn't let her expand her mountain. And here's where the nature tokens come in. Oh yeah, Jen is gonna throw a point away by spending this. And one of the uses for them is if you throw them, if you use them, you can bust up the pairs. You could take an animal from one pair and a tile from another pair. And that is exactly what Jen is gonna do because Jen, I think, 
So now she could take any one of these tiles. But, oh my gosh, here's a problem. Hold on. That's awesome. The problem is, Jen has no place to put this. And this is the only tile that actually would allow her to put more salmon out. So, Jen's got a bit of a sticky wicket, a bit of a push your luck element. She could wait. She could go on hand and get a fox and wait for one of these tiles to get replaced with something maybe that would be over here that would um, you know, work better with her terrain modification and then use this to get a tile and a salmon, put the salmon on the tile, maybe even get a keystone bonus, etc, etc. But what are the chances the salmon is going to stick around? Well, if Jen looks over at me, she can see I like salmon too. So there's no guarantee this is going to be around. So, uh, and see, this is, as the game goes on and on, it gets tougher and tougher. Um, you know, these kind of opportunities where an animal can go on the tile that's available, that's really important. I mean, ultimately, Jen, she's got places for hawks and elk and bears, but there aren't any of those. She does have a place for a fox if she wants it, but she doesn't know if she wants to start trying to score another animal as opposed to focusing on what she's already doing. So no, she's not going to use her nature token. She is going to take this. This is kind of a bummer. She is, she's, she's happy to be expanding her fields, and her fields can expand over there. I mean, she could go like this, and then maybe this forest could kind of come around this way in the future. Maybe. But I think not. She's going to have two forests, and only her best forest is the one that scores at the end of the game. But now, she's got a, a, level, a, a two length run. That's four points for these. And we are now tied for the biggest fields. All right. And Jen held on to this. All righty. Anyway, so we move on. And we've got some more options. And it's my turn. And oh, I want that bear. I want that bar. And yeah, this tile is great for me. I'm not going to use this to break things up. Oh, by the way, I should say, the other thing we can use these for is to force a repopulation anytime we want. Um, even if, uh, you know, like, so if, if there were four unique things and I want, if I didn't like that, I could spend this and only remove two of them and bring two more out, etc., etc. Although we find more often you use these so that you can mix and match pairs. But I don't need to. I love this. This is continuing. Uh, yeah. So there we go. And boom. Now I've got a nice little pair of bears. And I want to get some more bears down here because I can't come up there. I want to expand forest down in this area. I mean, I could go like this instead with the intent. Because well, actually... Huh... No, actually, I kind of like this, because if I grab this one to expand this, this water might eventually connect up to that. So let's go that way. Let's put our bear down. And that's a thing of beauty. Okay, and now we got a lone mountain. And it's these ones that only have one size, which means you're not potentially, they generally tend to be the keystones. And that's where a hawk wants to be. Okay, and another hawk comes out. It is Jen's turn. No more salmon, a lot of foxes. Again, Jen could wipe the foxes. I had the option to do it too. I didn't even think about it because, I mean, I was so... Uh, but I, I had what I wanted. I had no particular reason to, to wipe the floor. Uh, Jen would still like more salmon, so she is going to do that. So once again, the foxes are overpopulated. And again, if there were four of a kind, it would be mandatory. And should we draw a another salmon and an elk? And an elk. All right, Bo, uh, Jen's happy about that. So, so this is interesting. Oh, this is interesting. This could... Start, yeah, look at that. But again, the problem, this is perfect for her terrain. Making bigger water, potentially expanding, um, getting another salmon to extend her run. But no place to put the salmon. Ah! In fact, none of these tiles offer a home for salmon. And that's the problem um, that you always face in this game. I mean, you're going to focus more on the animals, more on the terrain. Ideally, you want to do both. This is an opportunity for Jen to keep on pushing the elk instead. Um, you know, this, unfortunately, it's not really working on the wetlands, but it is. I mean, Jen has now a size four mountain range versus my one. So that's nice. That's one, two, three, four points for her biggest mountain range. And since she beats me at the end of the game, in a two-player game, you get two bonus points for having the, the uh, largest of each of the terrain types. So that's really nice. The problem being that you can't put elk here, but you could put elk there. But now neither of these spaces can take... Although, remember, the elk want to be in a straight line. So that means Jen's going to need an elk space there or there. And meanwhile, this is a place where foxes and... Um, and again, once again, Jen is not laying out 
these birds in a way that would you know be able to let her pair them up based on this particular scoring option. Oh, does she want to do that? Hmm. Or, you know what, does she want to get another one of these, take a bird, put it, say, like this. Now she's got two places for birds. She puts this here, she gets one, and now, later on, if she puts a, a hawk here, she has made a pair of hawks and started on, um, you know, giving herself options there as well. <sighs> and she's made her mountain range bigger. And there's two elk still out here. So I think, yeah, bird literally in the hand, she's going to go for that one. All righty. And she'll try to get some elk later. And another mountain range comes out. Oh, and it's a place where salmon can go. And there's a fox. And it's my turn. And yeah, here's the deal. I know Jen is going to use this to take both of these to um, get a salmon and extend her run. So I should use one of mine first and get the only salmon and the only place to place the salmon. Although, I've got a pro... Oh, no, this isn't bad. This isn't great. Again, I'm not, gener I'm not making a bigger wetlands, but I am making a bigger mountain. And now I've got a size 2 salmon. So I've kind of neutralized Jen there. I'm pretty happy with that. And so since we've mixed this up, we get a new tile for Mr. Fox, who could be in a forest where elk want to be, and a bear. Okay, Jen's turn. All right, and as she hoped, those elk are still there, so she has the option she wants. And, um, although here's the problem. This is a space where she could put an elk to expand this or where she could put a, a hawk to expand her network of hawks. So she has more options there. Hmm. You know, a, a, a length two, to, a, a length two elk is only five points. But, uh, you know, a pair of hawks is only three. But um, the interesting thing is, this hawk could be part of multiple pairs. If Jen gets a hawk over here and a hawk over here, this hawk could be parts of multiple pairs. So you could really start to combo them. Where, I mean, the elk runs, they have to be separate from other elks. All right. Or does Jen want a bear? The bear can't go there, but, you know... Although, no, if Jen takes this bear, she can get herself another nature token. Yeah, I think she wants that bear to fill that keystone. Does she want this tile, though? This tile... Yeah, this isn't bad. That's not a bad tile at all, is it? Yeah. Although, unfortunately, two hawks right next to each other, because for this particular scoring one, the hawks have to have space in between and line of sight along a straight line. Uh, the only thing that breaks the line of sight would be another hawk in between two existing hawks. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like that. She'll go for that. And she'll spend an... No, no, she doesn't have to. Because, there we go. Look at that. And Jen gets her third one. Okay. And, oh. Some water and a hawk zone. And a bear. I want that bear. Here's the problem. If I take that bear, I cannot get that bear anywhere. So I need to... But I could spend my... La I could throw another point away and combine this bear in this or combine this bear in that. Here's another thing. I've got this fox. Remember, this fox wants to be next to multiple pairs. This, this fox is next to a pair of bears. So now I want a pair of something else and a pair of something else. Or, like, you know, uh, two hawks here and here so they see each other. And it's another pair next to the fox and then another pair down there. So I need to think about how do I want to expand this forest to leverage this fox as well. So, like, this is interesting. Because, hey, it's another keystone. This could be the beginning of a line of elk. And then another elk here could be another pair for this. And, but I don't want another fox. Um, so, if I go on ahead and, and take that, then, well, I want this bear, but I got no place to put it. Instead, I could take one of these elk. And I could take either one. And I might want to think about that, because maybe I'm disrupting what, what Jen, a pairing that Jen would like, or leaving a pairing that I would like later. There's a lot to think about. I mean, because I know I want this tile to go in this space, but I don't particularly care about an elk there, so I wouldn't mind disrupting that, so maybe a better animal will go there for me to put this here later on. So let's do that. Let's say, oh, Mr. Fox is so happy. He uh, One more elk in any of these spaces, and that's another... Um, we go from this being a three-point to a five-point fox. Nice. Okay, time for a new animal. Time for a new tile. And what is Jen going to do? So here's still this elk she wants. And remember, if she doesn't like these, she could spend one of these and wipe any of them she wants to try to get different combinations of animals. Hmm. <laughs> I think Jen would like to continue. No. 
Uh, Jen's getting to the point where she has to decide. Okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. And this, these are both elk spaces. So I think Jen is going to push the elk line rather than... And so she's going to want to put a hawk over here or over here or something like that to, to uh, pair those up. So Jen wants this. And is she happy with this? She could do her mountains or her wetlands. But this forest is in the way. Still, this isn't bad. It extends her mountains and a wetland space right there combines those two. So that's pretty nice. And this elk goes there. And so now this is a five point pair of elk working on a nine or a 13 pointer for having this run of elk. Okay, pretty happy about that. New tile and new critter. Okay, my turn. All right, no elk. I would like, and actually, and I am, I would really like to get another keystone. So maybe I want to grab this so I can get a bird eventually so I can get another keystone so I have some more nature tokens and have the flexibility I want. But here's the problem. Again, if I take this right now, I got to take this bear. This bear has no home and I have to toss him or he goes back in the bag. And um, although here's the deal. Am I fine leaving this pair alone? And then I try to go for a single and a triple someplace else so I can get the three point bonus. Maybe, but here's the thing, folks. This stack of tiles is the timer for the game. Once it empties out, it's over. And in a two player game, that stack of tiles is only half of all the tiles that are available. For all I know, there are very few bear habitats left in this, and most of them ended up out of the game. Woohoo! And I just made a bit of a mess. I'll clean that up later. Hee haw! Okay. Um, right. So. I think I'd like to hold on and try to get a bear position for there or there. Well, no, no, it has to be there. Because I don't want a bear here, because then that'll mess up getting um, you know, the three pairs I want for this fox. So I need a bear in this space. And this, th I'd want this tile. I want this tile. This is what I want. Because I put this here, it extends my waterways, it extends my field, and it is a space for a future third bear. And it gives me a fox. What am I going to do with this fox? This fox could come over here, thereby cutting off my line of elk. But, um, well, then I need another bear over here. That's not good to make a pair for this fox. So what if this fox comes over here? Or what if this fox goes up there? The, oh, that's not bad, because now this fox sees a pair. That's three points. And if I get, if I can extend my stamina run up here, then there's two. Yeah, that's beautiful. Love it. All righty. New one comes out. And Jen says, show me what you got. All right. And I've totally forgotten what Jen is all about. Right, she wants more elk. She wants another space for another hawk. She wants more salmon. There are no salmon. And, uh... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and so if Jen got that bear, she has no place to put it next to this bear. And remember, a lone bear is worth two points in this game. In another game, a lone bear would be worth nothing. You have to have at least pairs of bears, etc. Bear pair. Ugh, what is Jen going to do? Interesting choices. So, this tile is nice. It's another opportunity to continue her mountain and, and maybe expand this water some more. But, it's a place for fish that's nowhere near her other fish. Ugh. Boy, tough decisions. And folks, I'll tell you right now. Tough Decisions is what Cascadia is all about. I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of the feel of the game. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.